In this video, I will explain a risky investment strategy that will maximize gains. This is in contrast to my last video that explained an almost risk-free investment strategy. Please note that I am not an investment advisor, so I am not giving any investment advice. As always, please do your own due diligence as this is just the ravings of a madman on the internet. I did an investment screen of the performance of as many investments as possible in the last decade. Of all investments that I looked at, Bitcoin and Tesla stood out. Now, to be sure, there were probably investments in penny stock, IPOs, and shitcoins that did better. But even the highest risk-tolerating investor who is not a gambler will avoid those investments because they are usually not very liquid. This means that even if the price went up 10,000%, you may still lose money because you cannot find a buyer for your investment. Also, for smaller companies and uh, tiny shitcoins, if you're a whale, your sale of the investment will cause the investment's price to crash. For example, if you own $1 million of a shitcoin, but the total capitalization of the shitcoin is $10 million, if you sold your entire investment all at once, you'll crash the price of the shitcoin because your holdings are 10% of the total outstanding shares. So you'll greatly increase the supply while the demand for shares remain the same. So by the laws of supply and demand, the share price will fall. In contrast, if you own $1 million of a stock that has a $500 billion capitalization, you only own the ratio of 1 in 500 thousands of the total shares. Your sale of $1 million of this stock will not move the price of the investment at all. Now, past performance is not necessarily a predictor of future performance. However, in the decade that I looked at, Tesla stock and Bitcoin gained over 50% per year, compounded. This is crazy. Regarding Bitcoin, there are two sides of the coin. One side says that Bitcoin is one gigantic shitcoin because it claims to be money, but there's nothing backing it. You can't trade Bitcoin for gold with the central authority that controls Bitcoin. This is because Bitcoin has no central controlling authority. It is a decentralized digital currency. On the other side of a coin is the claim that Bitcoin is the future of money. It doesn't make sense in a world where you can go online to buy things to use scraps of paper for money. It is possible that Bitcoin could replace a major national currency in the future. For now, the first nation to make Bitcoin legal tender is the country of El Salvador. The president of Argentina has said in the past that Bitcoin is freedom money. Argentina will probably be the next country to make Bitcoin legal tender. Personally, my jury is still out on whether Bitcoin is or not is money. Sure, there's nothing backing Bitcoin, but there's nothing backing the dollar either. Bitcoin is software and software itself has value. For example, if you want to send $1 million to someone, you may wire them money. Many banks charge $30 to wire money domestically and $45 to wire money internationally. However, sending $1 million to someone with Bitcoin costs significantly less. The cost is called a minor fee and it varies. But the last time I experimented with Bitcoin, it cost me $5 to send Bitcoin. So in this use case, Bitcoin is cheaper. However, in other use cases, Bitcoin is more expensive. For example, you could use cash to buy a cup of coffee and use of cash is free. However, if you want to do an on-chain Bitcoin transaction to buy a $5 cup of coffee, you may have to spend $5 in fees. This makes no sense. Some programmers are trying to solve this problem with a solution known as the Lightning Network. I've used the Lightning Network and it is not user-friendly due to Bitcoin's very limited use cases in contrast to its lofty valuation, it is my opinion that Bitcoin is grossly overvalued and its history, its price, has crashed 80% or more within a matter of days. Bitcoin is not an investment for the weak of stomach. Now, what is the possible upside of Bitcoin? If Bitcoin replaces the US dollar, what will Bitcoin be worth? The M2 money supply is over $21 trillion. The capitalization of Bitcoin at the time of this video's release is approximately $1.2 trillion. Therefore, if Bitcoin replaces the dollar, then investors in Bitcoin will make more than 17.5 times your investment. 
I said more than 17.5 times because the total money supply is more than the M2 money supply. The M3 money supply is no longer published by the Federal Reserve Bank. M1, M2, and M3 are measurements of the U.S. money supply. M1 includes money in circulation plus checkable deposits in banks. M2 includes M1 plus savings deposits less than $100,000 and money market funds. M3 includes M2 plus large time deposits in banks. Finally, how should you invest in Bitcoin? Bitcoin purists will tell you that the safest way to hold Bitcoin is self-custody with a hardware wallet, such as a Trezor wallet. However, in my opinion, the best way to invest in Bitcoin is your tax-advantaged retirement account using a Bitcoin ETF or exchange-traded fund. This is because, depending on your country of tax residence and tax bracket, you could be paying 50% or more in taxes on your Bitcoin investment. This is because unless you are a Sal El Salvadoran, you cannot spend Bitcoin without taxation, as it is not legal tender as money anywhere else. Next, we're going to discuss Tesla stock. The best thing about Tesla stock is that most Wall Street analysts view Tesla as a car company. As a car company, Tesla is grossly overvalued. That's why a couple years ago, Tesla was one of the most shorted stocks in the stock market. A short is a financial position that will make you money when the stock price goes down, but lose your money if the stock price goes up. However, as an AI, robotics, and software company, Tesla is undervalued. Tesla is involved in the following businesses, solar panels, electricity, battery storage, auto insurance, electric cars, software for electric cars, and humanoid robots. Tesla has a huge lead with regard to its self-driving car software. In the U.S. alone, there are more than 2 million registered Teslas. There are more than 5 million Teslas on the road worldwide. All of these cars are collecting data for their self-driving robo-taxi research program. This is almost an unassailable lead because no other car manufacturer on Earth has that many cars on the road collecting data for a self-driving robo-taxi research project. There are other valuation models of Tesla's future robo-taxi network. However, they use too much conjecture on future sales figures. Instead, I think a more accurate valuation model would be to see what the current total dollars paid by everyone for taxi services as a base number to start with for a bare case scenario. For a bold case scenario, you would start with the dollars paid by everyone for transportation. In my bare case Tesla valuation model of their future robo-taxi service only, we'll start with the fact that there is roughly 18 million taxis in the world. Taxis are sometimes driven by more than one shift of taxi drivers, but for our valuation, we will be conservative and multi-18 million taxis by average annual income of a taxi driver, which is $23,000. This gives us $414 billion. Uber had $38.5 billion in revenue last year. Lyft had $4 billion, and Didi had $24 billion. Add that up, and the total is $67 billion in revenue for all the ride-sharing services. $414 billion taxi income plus $67 billion ride-sharing revenue equals to $471 billion annual global total market for taxi services. China has an approximately 34% share of this pie. Since China and Tesla are the leaders of AI-driven vehicle research, we can estimate that China will have a 34% market share, while Tesla will have a 66% market share. Cruise and Waymo are also doing autonomous driving research, but they do not have a huge fleet of data collecting vehicles, and their vehicles are driven by human-coded computer programs, not AI. The Chinese, such as Xpeng, and a couple, are a couple years behind Tesla, but they've but they're the most advanced self-driving system behind Tesla. Giving Tesla a 66% market share means Tesla will have $311 billion in annual revenue. Given a 20 to 1 price earnings ratio, that's $311 billion times 20 equals to a $6.22 trillion projected market cap. $6.22 trillion divided by $620 billion current market cap equals 10x the current stock price of $197 per share. In other words, 
if Tesla's future robo-taxi network replaces human taxi drivers and ride shares, then Tesla stock will be worth 10 times what it is worth today. This is a very conservative bear case scenario because I am only including in my Tesla valuation model one aspect of Tesla's total business in my valuation. I have not calculated into this valuation model Tesla's solar panels, battery electric storage, auto insurance, electric cars, nor humanoid robots. The grand question now is when the robotaxi program is going to roll out. Elon Musk recently went to China to possibly discuss regulatory approval for autonomous driving. This means that Tesla is really close to solving autonomous driving. In a recent shareholder meeting, Elon Musk said that each new version of full self-driving is two to 10 times better than this last version. He also said that the current version can go 10,000 miles before needing human intervention. I get to an auto accident every 100,000 miles or so. Therefore, if a car can go 100,000 miles without human intervention, then it should be at least as safe as a human driver. Using these numbers as a rough estimate, fully autonomous vehicle technology should be ready for a robotaxi program in one to two years. Also, Tesla might roll out the robotaxi platform in China first, because to get approval in China, you don't have to go through months of debate in Congress and the Senate. Approval in China can happen instantaneously. Therefore, you might see a 10x increase in the value of your stock in Tesla within the next seven years. Another business that Tesla has is the humanoid robot business. Most valuation models of the business potential of Optimus, Tesla's humanoid robot makes assumptions on the numbers of robots sold. In my opinion, these are all just conjectures. Instead, I started my math with the value of the total number of laborers in the world. The, this determines globally how much the economy is willing to spend on labor. Yes, Elon's prediction that there will one day be more than one humanoid robot per human in society may come true. However, when that day comes, the price of each humanoid robot would go down because the price of technology always comes down over time due to economies of scale. However, the total number of dollars the economy can pay for labor doesn't change, all other things being equal. In other words, as the technology matures, if the amount of money the economy pays for labor doesn't change, but the amount of labor you get for that money chain increases, you get more bots for your buck as robot technology matures. There are 3.5 billion workers making an average annual salary of $18,000 on planet Earth. 70% of workers are mostly manual laborers, such as baristas, construction workers, etc. 30% of workers mostly sit in front of, com front of a computer. 1.5% of workers are performing artists. 15% have a master's degree or higher. 6.3% of the workforce are salesmen or cashiers. 2% of workers are customer service reps. Despite Elon Musk's claim that all jobs will be replaced by robots and AI, so we will need a type of welfare for everyone. I disagree with Elon here. There will be jobs wherever a consumer demands a human. For example, ATM machines have been available to banks for decades, but they've never completely replaced a human bank teller. This is because human bank tellers provide customers customer service. A robot cannot provide customer service. Karens cannot yell at a robot and make it cry to make herself feel better. Any job that faces the customer will be decreased by robots, but will never be completely eliminated by robots. Jobs where the employee faces the customer includes baristas, waiters, customer service reps, salesmen, and cashiers. Other jobs resistant to replacement by robots and AI also include naughty jobs, politicians, ministers, athletes, and performing artists. Human consumers would demand humans for naughty jobs, such as strippers and other <clears throat> entertainers. Only a human politician can understand human needs and create policies aligned with human goals. Only a human of a soul can pray for another human. Pre-recorded music has existed for decades, but has never replaced the excitement of a live performance. Finally, sports test the limits of the human body using competition. The only definition the very definition of sports 
exclude robots. Robots can do jobs, but they cannot have careers. Unless robots become sentient, only humans can have careers. If robots become sentient, then all bets are off, because humans will go the way of the dodo birds, and robots will take over. However, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic and say that only biological beings can become self-aware. What this means for the job market is that only humans can be top-level scientists, corporate executives, and team leaders. This means that if you have a master's degree or higher education, then your job probably cannot be completely replaced in the job market. A highly educated and intelligent human has to lead teams of robots and other humans to accomplish goals. If I missed any other jobs that are resistant to being replaced by AI or robotics, I invite you to type it in the comments section. Finally, if you have a job that sits in front of a computer, you will be replaced by AI that has no robot body. Since 30% of jobs mainly involve sitting in front of a computer, roughly one third of all jobs will not be replaced by a robot. These jobs will be replaced by an AI. Also, based on the number of jobs that are resistant to replacement by robots, roughly one third of all jobs will be safe from replacement by robots and AI. This leaves one third of all jobs to replace by robots. There are 3.5 billion workers on planet Earth making an average annual salary of $18,000. One third of 3.5 billion equals to 1.2 billion. 1.2 billion workers times $18,000 equals to $21.6 trillion. Tesla now has roughly a 20% market share of global EV sales. Therefore, 20% of $21.6 trillion equals to $4.32 trillion in salary per year, replaced by Tesla's robot, Optimus. $4.32 trillion times 20 price to earnings ratio equals to $86.4 trillion market cap. $86.4 trillion divided by $620 billion current market cap equals to 140 times the current stock market price. In other words, it is possible to make 140 times your Tesla stock investment. However, the bigger question is, when will this happen? When will you make 140 times your money? Central to a robot's capabilities is the robot's brain or microprocessor. Using Moore's law, we can predict when a $1,000 computer will have the equivalent processing capabilities as the human brain. The year when this will happen is 2045, give or take a couple years, because I am not a psychic. In other words, an investment in Tesla stock today might make you 140 times your money based on evaluation of only Optimus. Notice that I said might make you 140 times your money, not will. This is because any number of things can go wrong. There is a very real possibility that you will lose all your money. For example, Elon Musk could meet his demise prematurely. Without Steve Jobs, Apple has not become, come up with any revolutionary new product since his death. Customers are only getting incremental improvements on the iPhone. The Apple car project cost $10 billion for a nothing burger. Steve Jobs would, would have slept at the office and drove his team 16 hours a day until they coughed up an Apple car. He wouldn't have flushed $10 billion down the toilet. Likewise, Elon slept at the factory when he was going through production hell, getting the Model 3 factory production online. Without Elon Musk, there is no Tesla. Tesla, the innovation company, will become Tesla, the car company, without Elon. Remember, this is a high-risk investment strategy. So what exactly is this high-risk strategy? For investment in a tax advantage retirement account, such as a 401k or Roth IRA, I would buy all Tesla stock and sell Bitcoin ETF when the stock price is low, but the Bitcoin price is high. Then, when the price of Bitcoin is low while the price of Tesla is high, I'd sell stock and buy Bitcoin ETF. However, if I am not doing this in a tax advantaged retirement account, I'd buy and hold, because each sale is a taxable event. To avoid paying a ton of capital gains tax, I would just buy and hold. For example, when Tesla is low, I'd buy Tesla and hold. When Bitcoin is low, I'd buy Bitcoin and hold. I wouldn't sell one asset for cash to buy another asset with, because I would just buy and hold both assets. Finally, I suggest you take what I say with a gigantic grain of salt, because 
what I say might be wrong. Please do your own research. Also, I am biased because I'm a huge Tesla fanboy. I own a Tesla Model 3 and either own or plan to own Tesla stock and Bitcoin. This makes my opinion biased as heck.